having that last trend, low-rise jeans or an asymmetric skirt or a decomposed jacket in a fashion color might look like you're on track. On track with fashion, on track with uh, contemporary, on track with Instagram, and so eventually one post ahead the others. So you click a button or hand over your credit card in an instant, Da da! That garment is yours. You have it. After all, you look so good in it and you will make a great impact. But when you go home and try it out, you realize this new garment that you just purchased and you love undoubtedly is somehow not fitting with the rest of your wardrobe or accessories. So instinctively, you start browsing the web looking for that perfect complementary pieces to style it with. And long life to the web, you actually find all you are looking for and you buy it. So now you have it all, then you nail it. But what you actually have nailed is called the Dieter effect. Hi, I'm Alexandra and I'm so grateful to have you here. Welcome to Brave New World where we explore personal growth, passion and sustainability. Make yourself comfortable and embrace the good vibes with today's video. Um, a few months ago, I read a book called Atomic Habits that inspired me so much. It inspired me to be a better me, a better for myself and better with myself. But also, its concept inspired me professionally. So today's video is dedicated to James Clear's Atomic Habits. I guess you have heard about the book, if not, link below uh, in the description. I'm going to read you a part of the book dedicated to the Diderot effect. Ah, the book uh, by itself has nothing to do with fashion on first thought, but something to do with all aspects of life. And so your purchasing habits as well, Kindle. My Kindle. The French philosopher Denis Diderot lived nearly his entire life in poverty, but that all changed one day in 1765. Diderot's daughter was about to be married and he couldn't afford to pay for the wedding. Despite his lack of wealth, Diderot was well known for his role as the co-founder and writer of the Encyclopédie, one of the most comprehensive encyclopedias of that time. When Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia, heard of Diderot's financial trouble, her heart went out to him. She was a book lover and greatly enjoyed his encyclopedia. She offered to buy Diderot's personal library for 1,000, I don't know, local money for that time, more than $150,000 today. Suddenly, Diderot had money to spare. With his new wealth, he not only paid for the wedding, but also acquired a scarlet robe for himself. Diderot's scarlet robe was beautiful, so beautiful in fact, that he immediately noticed how out of place it seemed when surrounded by his more common possessions. He wrote that there was no more coordination, no more unity, no more beauty between his elegant robe and the rest of his stuff. Diderot soon felt the urge to operate his possessions. He replaced his work with one from the mask. He decorated his home with expensive sculptures. He bought a mirror to place above the mantel and a better kitchen table. He tossed aside his old straw chair for a leather one. Like falling dominoes, one purchase led to the next. Diderot's behavior is not uncommon. In fact, the tendency for one purchase to lead to another one has a name, the Diderot effect. The Diderot effect states that obtaining a new possession often creates a spiral of consumption that leads to additional purchases. Wow, amazing, what can I say? Amazing. I've never heard about that before, and why should I? I, like most of you, didn't study marketing in order to get in touch with such information. I studied fashion design and worked eight to six as a designer in an office. And now, hearing about the Diderot effect, designing makes perfect sense to me. Bring a strong trend in your collection range, making it appealing and irresistible to boost consumer behavior. Thanks to modern methods, such as photography and social media, highlight how Acquiring a single item can influence our perception of our overall lifestyle and possessions to potentially lead to more consumption than originally intended, actually. That's the main problem with buying new items. How likely will we gonna wear them after purchase? 
I have already tons of videos about that, if you want to check the link in the description, I will not talk about that in details now. Rather than that, I would like to bring your attention to the single ultra trendy item you're willing to buy. It might be a jacket, top, bottom, whole piece, whatever. The issue with a trendy item is that they're not a real trend. That's right, you've heard me. A trendy item is an attempt at the Ditro effect because it's often difficult to style and pushes you towards a spiral of purchases where one drives to the other. In this spiral of purchases, you have lost money, a significant amount of money actually, uh, to buy more items, and what you gained are things that you didn't need before, but you do now because what you had didn't fit with your last purchase. Don't misunderstand me. If you always liked and wore low-rise jeans, that's fine to have a new pair now that this fashion is back. Or if your style is more punk, feel free to buy that the new ultra-trendy punk shoes displayed in any brand with the wall uh, in this moment. But don't do it just because it's cool and everywhere in the stores or in your friends' closets. Mass market brands will pull out at least once per month an ultra-trendy capsule collection, aka appealing of the sexy garments that will make you dream how you would look wearing them. But the capsule collection sparkling dress with fringes must be worn with the capsule collection super fashionable high-heeled boots and also that set of earrings and necklace from the same collection and this never seen before but seen everywhere back and so on. Acquiring a new item will not influence other people's perception of us. It will only negatively impact our wallet, environment and spirit. Don't let consumerism break your spirit. Next time you decide to buy that trendy item, think from this perspective. Instead of buying a trendy garment, I will establish a new, trendy behavior characterized by an abundance of self-confidence. Because clothes do not define me. I do not need to show myself always with something new. Instead of spinning in the spiral of the Diderot effect, I will be spiraling toward identifying my style and this will be the trend I will always wear. And so I will always be fashionable. If you have doubts about how to find your own style, in the description I share links with you. Thank you for watching and for supporting me with a like, comment, subscription. But most of all, thank you for being part of this brave new world.